Uh, dear colleagues, the purpose of our today's discussion is identifying forward-looking uh, ideas about the development of transportation and logistics infrastructure in Tatarstan. Uh, based on what we are seeing now, what uh, we would be having in the future, uh, I guess we would uh, go and have everyone add, contribute, uh, possibly we'll have some questions in the process, and in conclusion we might have some uh, common opinion formed. I guess I would start myself with uh, giving some overview of the infrastructure, maybe some narrow points that we are still having. Well, historically, Tatarstan is uh, located at the crossroads of uh, transportation and merchant, you, uh, merchant routes. Uh, historically, East, West, and uh, South, North paths. Obviously, Great Volga route. Uh, later, Trans Siberian Railroad. Th this uh, has reflected also on the fact that uh, when uh, Makarievsky Fair, that was uh, when it was moved uh, to Nizhny Novgorod, it uh, didn't give the same successful results uh, there as it was when having in Kazan. Uh, we are obviously looking at uh, later development of uh, Vol Privorsky Railroad, a uh, network of various highways. It uh, did uh, affect uh, on the increase of this transportation attractiveness of Tatarstan. Looking forward, Tatarstan is uh, to become an important logistics center for all the regions of Volga region, as well as a nodal point of uh, southeast, uh, uh, south, uh, north, south, east, west, obviously existing network, as well as the Europe Western China Highway. Uh, this transportation routes is governed by the federal level highways and railroads. Uh, which is overlaid by the regional level highways. Looking forward, uh, uh, some 90% of the existing roads will need to be uh, reconstructed and modernized. Of course, we'll be having new ones, but the 90% of what we will have in the future will be what we have today, just in better. Uh, guess the challenges of today, we need to look on increasing throughput capacity. And if we take a look at the rates uh, of uh, logistics growth, we see they are uh, even better than in many develop in majority of developed economies on our highways. So in that sense, uh, it's not just Tatarstan's uh, domestic transportation flows, but we are an important crossroads. Thus, the dynamic of the uh, throughput uh, at the federal level, at the federal transportation flows level, is affecting the flows in the Republic. If we are giving you some figures per 1st January 2020, we see both federal and regional highways are mainly, uh, we have, the main share is of the third uh, category quality. Uh, and thus, uh, we see that uh, we need to be improving the existing surfaces, uh, road surfaces in the Republic. Now, we can, of course, take a look at the funding part of things, whether the Republic has uh, what it needs to fund that infrastructure. The data for the previous year, we see that the structure of funding the existing uh, the existing highways and roadways, we see that about two thirds of funding is uh, done by regional uh, public budget, uh, despite the fact that there are some federal highways. Uh, 
here. Uh, looking forward, uh, uh, there are a number of uh, priority issues that require reconstruction with the International uh, Corridor of Transib, as well as uh, an M7 Federal Highway crossroad, uh, cro Volga crossing, as well as, of course, Kazan to Bugulma uh, Railroad uh, connecting Orenburg and Kazakhstan, a strategic line that will e have e to eventually connect Kazan with Tatarstan, as well as international transportation corridors, north-south, or also known as the Great Volga Route. Uh, at the same time, the implementation of big, big water ring uh, that is to connect Volga, Don, Azov, Sea, uh, Black Sea, uh, and then uh, uh, linking it through the Baltic. And of course, important cor auto corridor Europe to Western China. Uh, Kazakhstan is actively developing and already has introduced the uh, main segments of that route, whilst in Russia those, uh, the route was finally identified just recently. In that sense, uh, uh, in Kazakhstan they are funding this at the federal level as well as with uh, Western investors, whilst in uh, Russia it was uh, decided and discussed at the, fe at the regional level. Thus, we were much slower in adopting. And there were a number of proposals how to organize uh, different highways. Uh, you see the original one uh, routes, you see some proposals. Uh, and then uh, thinking through the economic uh, factors, we were uh, discussing the accessibility to many other regions, such as even connectivity later with Iran and Afghanistan, 300, 400 kilometers. Thus, some work is still to be done on designing the infrastructure for that corridor, not just the highway itself, but overall organization, uh, attracting investors, various logistic formats, and other things that require attention. And we definitely don't have enough. And this is international uh, uh, multimodal logistics center. And two, it has the capacity of 14 million tons, turn over quite comparable with the logistical center on Caspians, and that's exactly what we wanted to do originally to connect this to a logistical center. But unfortunately, we had some problems, and the main one was the uh, absence uh, of uh, Eurasian corridors and lack of money. And, and this is the second uh, strategic plan. It's uh, corridors instead of republics, the south part with uh, from uh, uh, right bank of Volga to Aktanish, uh, where we have to build a bridge. And this is uh, the middle bridge, or middle corridor, as we call, from south to north, from Baltasi to Nurlat and to Samara. And this is the north corridor through Kazan, Arsk, and Baltasi, and then to the north to Kirov. So these corridors, uh, all are necessary uh, in order to uh, make our road junctions better. And this is Kazan itself, uh, where we have this uh, ring road and uh, this, this electric train here. So these all problems, of course, are quite important, quite big. You cannot solve them very quickly. These um, uh, challenges need extra financing. And I would like to give floor to uh, my colleague, next specialist, to Alexander Kadrashov, who will tell us uh, about uh, uh, Web Bank, about their financial support in 
and uh, he'll talk about the uh, transportation infrastructure development. <coughs> Yes, Kalagi, I am ready. So, first of all, let's just begin with understanding that we know what happens in the public transportation in almost in all regions in Russia. In Tatarstan, uh, has reached a lot and has done a lot. And this reform, which uh, was uh, in Kazan in terms of public transportation, can be a role model and a good example for many other cities. Kazan is continuing doing a lot, and they, Kazan is building the ring road, finishing it, and uh, uh, we don't have a lot of these projects in Russia. So this is uh, unique. Uh, this Kazan project is unique. I hope Kazan will continue uh, and uh, start Bruta contracts, and Kazan will continue developing public transportation. Apart from Kazan, we work actively with Nabirzhny Chalny and with Nizhny Kansk. We're trying to <coughs> work with their municipalities and uh, so that they will start transportation reform, so that they will renovate their transportation fleet, uh, transportation vehicle fleet. Uh, we believe that these uh, cities are quite young and uh, they, they have a very good topology and uh, they were built as cities for trams and trams can move a lot of people on a high speed on a long distance and uh, uh, these industrial zones and residential zones are in different parts of the city and in these cities uh, tram lines can be very, very efficient and economically plausible. <coughs> and um, uh, we are ready to support these projects and we are uh, interested in financing this project. As we see that uh, it could probably a concession contract. And uh, nowadays we have just, uh, in our country, we have just one uh, concession tram project in St. Petersburg. But we see that it's quite promising uh, project, and uh, we are certain that uh, Tatarstan can become one of the pioneers uh, which implements this project in electric transportation based on concession contract. Uh, we pay a lot of attention to uh, development of public transportation and uh, we believe that uh, in many ways uh, public transportation was uh, underestimated and if you look at the viewpoint from any and just like a root um, day of uh, we, we spend a lot of time uh, in the offices, we spend a lot of time at home, but we always have hour or two in which we spend in uh, public transportation. And this public transportation must be safe, must have air conditioning in summer and good heating system in winter. Uh, public transportation must be predictable, uh, must be easy to understand, easy to use. Uh, uh, it with uh, available, acceptable, affordable tariffs and uh, unified tariffs uh, for all transportation companies who work and serve people in one city. We believe that public transportation now is uh, getting a very, very significant support. And uh, that's exactly what our president was talking about this year, which uh, gave order to develop a federal project to support public transportation reforms in the regions. And uh, now we are preparing the first draft of this project. And Minister of Transportation of Russian Federation is uh, gathering comments to this um, project. Yes, we see that we pay more attention to public transportation. We try to support these projects. We work very 
actively with Nizhnykamsk and Nizhnykamsk. We work uh, intensely with the Republican Minister of Transportation, and uh, we would like that the first big projects uh, in this uh, transportation reform, uh, in which we invest a lot into electric transport, we want them to be implemented in Tatarstan. We are ready uh, to apply m all efforts which which have been necessary. So we we are ready to work with you. Thank you. And the, the, this this fear, uh, we we work. Uh, uh, a lot upon transportation cities, not only megapolis, but also in mono cities. And uh, we mentioned uh, logistical centers. So, mono cities, uh, they uh, we pay special attention uh, to them. And uh, I would like to ask Natalia to uh, to talk about this problem in mono cities. Um, so how how can we work together? So uh, the parameters of uh, development of the Republic of Tatarstan, we hold all necessary information in strategy 2030. Uh, we already mentioned the advantages of uh, Tatarstan geography, which allows to organize very good transportation connections with many regions of Russia. This is one advantage. Second advantage is economic policy of Republic of Tatarstan, and we pay special attention to development of the mono cities. We have seven of them, beginning from 2015, with the support of a fund for support mono cities. We implemented several uh, projects <coughs> which help us to overcome some mm, the problems with the infrastructure we uh, reconstructed we renovated the industrial zone in the Chelny uh, roads in Nizhny Kamsk and we created uh, uh, road infrastructure for industrial parks in Zelnodotsk Nizhny near Kamsk and industrial park Razvitya and we also uh, continued building infrastructure for higher project uh, which allowed us to uh, create 5,000 jobs, and in mono cities uh, we have five, five territories of advanced economic development on which we have 82 residents. And uh, uh, this, uh, the money which we invested, uh, uh, allowed us to uh, attract more than 25 billion. Uh, investment and, as I've already said, create 5,000 jobs. And now we have more projects, uh, more uh, logistical projects. Uh, we uh, built um, a logistical park, X5 Retail Group. They have two distribution centers. One is in Zilnodotsk and one is in Yolaboga. Uh, they will open them on the 20, open them 26th of August. And uh, uh, they will provide more jobs, and the building of these uh, logistics centers uh, will help uh, local producers to put their products on retail uh, stores. And uh, uh, we work with Azon, a um, uh, shipping company, and uh, Wildberries in Zilnodolsk as well, uh, together with the president. It will help uh, us to create new economic branch, new industry, uh, which will give us 7,000 more jobs, which is comparable with the uh, uh, number of jobs in a big, uh, big industrial company. Investors choose Tatarstan because we have very good logistics, uh, because we provide give these advantages uh, through our developed transportation system. And we, we, we believe we, we have to continue in this area. And of course, um, it's very important to have support of the fund for support of mono cities. Yes, uh, mono cities, uh, uh, we have to develop them. And these uh, functions which we uh,
we, we see that uh, what, what you're doing, it uh, really helps us to cope with quite difficult situations, to create new jobs and uh, adding up to the infrastructure which we already have. But we, we have underlined uh, that uh, automobile transportation is um, most favorable one because of a number of uh, advantages which they give and further, it's further development um, uh, for us it is important and I would like to ask my colleague to talk more about it uh, he is a head of a special committee in um, the Chamber of Trade and Commerce of our Republic well thank you and uh, 20, 20 years ago the main uh, goal for us was um, creating more jobs and uh, as, as, as I understood uh, now it is not, not, not the main purpose for us our republic has become a place for, for the companies which come here, develop here and invest, invest here and if you look at who comes uh, here is uh, Azon, Wildberry is higher and uh, we have uh, federal um, chains of big corporations or holdings uh, well it, it, to what extent it's beneficial for us well it's a question uh, I think that we have to develop our own internal resources we have to uh, organ, uh, found companies here uh, with the, and make them uh, bigger players on Russia or global and uh, so that is why we have to uh, build not something like logistic uh, logistically important but we have to train people uh, who will do it because who will uh, work on this um, in these companies who will move our economy and strategy forward so we talk a lot about strategy but I would like to know whether we have strategy for development of the uh, uh, cargo transportation automobile uh, we talk about uh, logistics we talk about logistics center but uh, logistical centers without trucks and without goods they cannot they use the useless they, we have to understand cargo traffic through us uh, what kind of cargo we move in what direction this uh, traffic goes and uh, it's, it's a paradox but we basically um, uh, see either petrochemical products uh, from our republic or we move in uh, products and goods uh, consumed by our people uh, we where where we we uh, bring in these products uh, do we uh, make this part of part of it here so we we have some uh, questions about the cargo traffic as for the uh, traffic cargo traffic analysis so uh, I heard that we had a uh, big growth in 2014 well this growth was connected with the fact that we started counting better and but uh, the precision of this uh, counting uh, it's, it's a big question if in uh, railroads we have a special system of uh, calculating cargo traffic in uh, automobile uh, transportation it, it is small and medium business a lot of private uh, companies which uh, do not uh, accounted for in statistics but without it we cannot build up any strategy next is the needs of consumers which we have what do people need uh, how can we get this information how can we analyze this information that's important we talk uh, about development of economy about development infrastructure at the same time we uh, introduce some limitation measures for the cargo transportation well it, it, it's we have already have the headache with this hope with the heavy-duty traffic well, that means we have a certain plan 
So did the Sarods of third category can move up to the second category, first category, but it'll, it'll, it'll take years. Speaking of, uh, speaking of corridor, uh, Europe, China, we've talked a lot about it, but uh, what, what is the benefit for us that through our territory we'll get this huge uh, traffic of cargo is it big is it not is it profitable is it not for us we don't have this information i believe we have to develop our own road network and to develop our own production because companies depend on supply from china we were almost paralyzed because we bring in uh, even little things electric bulbs ball bearings uh, and other small things i mean everything and this is why uh, for strategic development of russia we have to understand that import substitution must be real not just words because sometimes we talk about import substitution and then we just continue knock down technology uh, and uh, I, I work in the uh, automobile cargo transportation we import uh, parts and consumer goods and uh, we basically import all of it we, we don't move it inside of Russia and uh, I think we have to borrow experience from the foreign countries protectionism this word is not very popular but in many countries it does exist reasonable protectionism for example the, the international uh, automobile cargo transportation like in Europe we see that in every country they lobby interests of the the uh, truck drivers in Germany, Poland, and Kazakhstan, any country, they have this lobbyism. We don't have it. And uh, everybody is thinking about uh, the importance of uh, opening markets to everybody. Thus, uh, it's uh, disputable whether this is right against the international situation. If we would be actually uh, growing, developing automotive uh, delivery companies uh, in Tatarstan would be having an important advantages. 1,000 trucks is uh, would be significant amounts of investments, and that would be leading to an important economic effect. Uh, limited time-wise, you mentioned that the network that was established in the 20th century is not uh, meeting the needs of the 21st, and it needs uh, to be developed and developed rapidly. I mentioned about railroads. would probably be rounding up because I already did uh, speak much. Maybe we should uh, go in the, into discussion mode. Uh, the first idea it's important to have the analytics for the corporation. We don't have such analytical centers that have such functions. In this sense, Tatarstan could uh, probably initiate such center, at least within the Volga Federal District under the aegis of federal government and it's quite possible to have uh, such uh, centers in the federal districts and I had that discussion with Sergei Glazio. Unfortunately we don't have that to have analytics for cooperation within the federal district and larger at a Russian level and since many regions are export oriented such as Tatarstan that would be very happy to have it at the level of transportation industry we don't have that analytics yet talking about uh, larger corridors they are being shaped without us consciously understanding why they are needed Russia is located between two large markets, which are European as well as Chinese, and uh, such routes should be there. Uh, of course, some colleague, you know, sometimes the Chinese are looking at a different route, such as the Silk Wind through Kazakhstan, but uh, the direct route would be through Russia, and of course it would be important to be integrating with our regional systems. The only question is if we are developing our production, we would be using that uh, the 
advantages of having this uh, larger corridors but if we don't uh, we'll only be having the transit uh, flows only talking about protectionism a reasonable protectionism it's obviously uh, appropriate we need to be developing uh, our players so we shouldn't be expecting that uh, the market will help them to uh, get stronger because transnational companies, uh, logistics uh, companies, they are working uh, together with the powerful banks and those are uh, oftentimes being more powerful than national states. I would like to comment about your proposal on developing our uh, local players, uh, for example, we are now having this logistics center, uh, and so people are saying there would be jobs, uh, who would be working there, uh, those who would be loading and offloading, but then we should be thinking about where would people be located that are creating uh, added value in and then I don't see uh, high-tech jobs that are created in the Republic because once again those larger flows would be managed by higher level players it's important to have uh, education etc in this sense uh, I feel uh, Aksana Rashko will be capable of responding to this professor of Kazanov Aviation Institute who is uh, working on this topic professionally on logistics servicing as well as localization of logistics centers I think we'll give her the opportunity to comment uh, some questions of ours so Nikolaevna can respond to this with one of, in a qualified manner I'll be very happy to respond with great pleasure first of all talking about jobs you stole my argument unfortunately quite often logistics center is uh, treated as a warehouse logistics center is not a warehouse it's a large terminal complex that has um, lots of logistics technologies in place such as processing loads offering a whole, whole spectrum of servicing we are talking about high class providers capable of uh, delivering uh, loads and on top of that those might be shop shops for uh, processing uh, repackaging marking but as well as processing of the load to uh, the end product Unfortunately, that uh, moment is being missed in Tatarstan when we are talking about logistics platforms, wherever I have a chance to speak. I am inviting people to stop looking at logistics center as at the warehouse. We are talking about large living organism, which is having a great diversity of functions. That's the first thing second comment of mine is about the paradox we are seeing we are seeing in Tatarstan today on one side there are plenty of logistics spaces but the terminal technologies are not represented I'm talking about logistics centers as logistics terminals are not even being considered let's take a look at statistics the largest accessible logistics centers we have in Tatarstan a class are Biektau, or Q Park, as well as Konstantinovsky. All of them went through bankruptcy procedures already, and they are not working at full capacity, mainly working as warehouses. Thus, mainly offering services on storage, thus renting out their spaces whole spectrum of other, let's call them warehouses, located at logistics platforms of Tatarstan are once again are not class A 
well, uh, warehouses and they are not having a demand because modern even warehousing technologies are requiring proper equipment, delivery, digitization of processes, etc. Uh, companies are of course happy to be building their own logistics centers, a large uh, trading platforms such as Ozon, AliExpress, uh, Pitorochka, RX uh, Retail. They are of course happy to come to our market because our uh, transportation network is well developed, it is growing, uh, but uh, overloading our transportation networks, they are not at all supporting the development of our intra-regional economy. Of course, they are contributing into the tax payments to some degree, of course, that's bringing in investment too, but they are directed at, of course, serving their own corporate interests and not the interests of the region, per se. Uh, our working team has uh, been making efforts on the development of a regional logistics center for many years. Part of that was uh, the development of the concept of the network of logistics facilities. We developed a large econometric model. Uh, you see here we have accumulated together the analysis of, uh, of respective criteria per various districts of Tatarstan. As the speaker before me or has already stated, accounting for various stochastic flows within the region was rather challenging. We were forced to use uh, neural network programming to get some appropriate indicators on the flows within the region. We have identified the 24 criteria, including both uh, qualitative, uh, binary, as well as quantitative criteria, which we use to assess logistics potential of every district. We were developing the fishbone diagram, various uh, calculations, and then we ended up, as a result, a rating of districts of the Republic of Tatarstan. If we go to the fishbone diagram you have in front of you, uh, first place is taken by the productive potential and the development of the, uh, the net road network per every district. You see that leading positions are uh, in cases of districts that are part of main agglomerations of Tatarstan. Kama, Nizhnikamsk, Almi... Tukaisky, Nizhnikamsk, Almitevsk are the road numbers in Chon, as well as Kazan agglomeration. That's not surprising because their productive potential is quite high. At the same time, we see that some of the districts are Ski, Chistapoyski, Mamadirski, that are not part of respective agglomerations, or still have quite a high level of potential, uh, as well as uh, of logistics infrastructure. Uh, and it's important to pay attention to what they are having. In our cases, unfortunately, we are seeing the uh, gigantism and trying to build large universal centers, logistic centers, but the structure of our republic makes it uh, possible to have great diversity of players, small and medium businesses, in particular in agricultural field, and it's important for us to build the logistics centers for retail, because for the farmers, uh, neither commerce nor logistics is uh, an area of their professionalization. It's better to have not necessarily small, not big 
uh, not large, uh, but uh, professionals working, serving a respective niche. Uh, we have uh, developed an approximate localization map as well as some instructions on the development of new logistics facilities. We have uh, prepared some recommendations on optimization of existing logistics centers, including the ones that are unfortunately operating at a loss at the moment, including facilities that are either at the stage of construction or have um, been commissioned but didn't reach profitability yet and it will be difficult to talk about uh, their long-term profitability for example Zainsky one that serves as logistics a commercial and distribution center with a great share of retail trade we did prepare that those recommendations and prepare it's applied to uh, decision makers, we do hope that they would be followed if some uh, if we made the selection of uh, software tools in a way that any be it official or an investor at the business at the small medium business level will be capable of understanding its interface uh, could engage with the developers and without uh, significant professional knowledge in logistics processes could express the interest on either construction of uh, some logistics center or optimization of services provided and all of that would be reflected into our calculations and then conclusion I'd like to state that this computational model uh, uh, is uh, very much uh, speaking for the importance of development of uh, production services so we made that and is there what Aksana Nikolaevna has said should be should be taken into account by our respective ministries. I would like now to give the the floor to Lisa Eldarona Shraifeva, Director General of the Industrial Park at Zilnadolsk, uh, talk uh, for her to shed some light on the situation in the proximity to Kazan in the Nadolsky district, interaction of the logistics networks with the transport complex and centers developed here. Uh, transportation logistics centers are seen by us as a coordinated interaction of all types of transportation as well as infrastructure that is needed to our investors at Zilnadolsk Industrial Park. Uh, just like it was stated by previous colleagues, we have faced that the principal development of mono-industrial cities and cluster of dimension of those territories was uh, seen as productive. Uh, but uh, natural development of business is uh, not uh, is having their own its own logic. In Zelnadolsky uh, Industrial Park turned to be a focus of uh, many uh, logistics players. And Alexander Nikolaevna has said that uh, such centers are not just warehouses, but uh, com complex fulfillment centers. Uh, that is allowing to create quality jobs. Some realities that we face is that when we start having investors that have great uh, plans for the fulfillment and they see that the infrastructure in place is not uh, matching the class of projects and the expectations for the projects that they have, we face that, we, st we try to address it somehow. Another element, uh, the so-called Sviyaga multimodal complex, which foresees a coordinated interaction of all types of infrastructure. And of course, that location will also turn into an important uh, drawing point, uh, bringing attention of uh, 
large international companies integrated into our economy, helping us to develop. From our point of view, uh, it's important for us to be considering our infrastructure from the point of view of uh, as an upper, as various strong sides or pluses that our territory can offer to international investors. And the location that we have should very well uh, should be very well leveraged. Talking about the management of such uh, logistics centers is important uh, to a to be located at respective corridors. The, it's important to give significant tax preferences, just like in territories of advanced socioeconomic development, uh, as well as special economic zones that would be allowing for the Republic to be more attractive for project implementation. Uh, the point uh, of localization of uh, Siega multi-model point was selected at the area of the crossing of number corridors and that location is very much needed. I believe that all of the previous history of the development of trade and industry in Tatarstan it's clear that this project requires help and support and it, it requires various components that uh, it would be dependent on, such as Eurasian network. As it was said, our own uh, uh, loads need uh, transportation, uh, warehousing, as well as proper logistics. In that sense, the centers themselves can't exist without production, but it's important to be turning them into production centers as well, just like Oksani Kalani has said. Vladimir, can I just make a little comment? That's, that's exactly what we uh, talked about with Oksana. And look, uh, you just uh, do something on the territory, uh, create an, a territory with uh, tax privileges on which we uh, invite our investors, uh, federal or international. They use all these uh, benefits. They develop. We create conditions for them. And the only plus for us, that's new jobs, which, which you talk about. For our local players, we don't have these possibilities. We don't have such a good financial support as a federal uh, incomers. We don't have uh, we have because we're small. We're small farmers, small transportation companies, and we for our federal competitors we create even better conditions. What we see now, we have a local transportation companies, they leave, they close, they cannot develop, they cannot compete with these big monsters. As a result, what you're going to have? A local companies don't pay their profit tax, uh, they don't have any uh, big investment projects. Yes, drivers go to big transportation companies, but these transportation companies pay taxes. We know. that don't pay all taxes here. Most taxes go to the central office. So for me, it's important to develop our own transportation, Tatarstan transportation companies. And we create favorable conditions for local companies, same about logistics center, so that we create this logistics center for local companies. And as my colleague said, it is not just a warehouse. Yes, uh, well, we have developed both, but we uh, pay more attention to our local one. Look, any big player who comes here, who services this logistics center, our local companies, even if they uh, participate in this, 
they do it through mediators, federal mediators, who already have taken most share of their market. Well, that's a problem which, you, which we can solve together with the Minister of uh, Economies. Yes, I, uh, you have to protect local players. I mean, maybe indirect uh, protection. Uh, but we have to create conditions for growth of local companies and make them competitive. We have to foster our local companies. May I comment? I work uh, closely with the residents and investors. Azon, Valbers, X5 Retail. Probably we don't. Uh, inform people about Azon and Valboris. <coughs> Anybody uh, who work locally can work with Azon and Valboris. Before they started building, they opened education center for our businesses in order to explain to them how to work on their platform, in order to um, open markets available for all supply. This is a window of opportunity to go to federal market. And as for transportation companies, all these companies, their head offices are in Moscow, but uh, uh, but nobody will just move their uh, logistics specialists uh, here. They hire locally. It is a synergetic effect when big player comes, they start helping small and medium business uh, locally here. <coughs> Natalia probably will... Uh, give more information. They, um, incomers, play, uh, play, uh, pay taxes locally. Uh, we, we give them, yes, tax privileges, but if they create new production, we give the same privileges to the local uh, um, participants. I believe we have to continue this dialogue. I'm practitioner. You 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 you're telling me theoretical things. These beautiful stories uh, about this uh, uh, using foreign words. But I will tell you. Uh, okay, simply put, if federal uh, player comes and hires locally, we know that we, when we sign contract, uh, we sign contract with the Moscow companies, with the Moscow names, with the Moscow, uh, with Moscow registration, at least. If we take Kazan Brewery, for example, yes, a Moscow company hires us, but we know uh, prices before and uh, prices after. And prices increased every five years. We don't have investment possibilities to develop in transportation companies. We all know all of them. First, they come in as um, just as companies, and then they buy 200, 300 trucks, and they grow and they become big, big companies. It was a small company, and then became bigger company. I guess I understand the problem. It must be solved in in dialogue. We have limited time for our discussion. We understand. The, the, the problem. Can I say something else? That's good that we have this uh, big chains as uh, Walburys and Azon. That's good that we develop region. But there's a nuance. Logistical uh, uh, chain is chain. It must not be involved into the big um, service only big players. They must keep the balance in order not to pull additional resources to clusters and just uh, we must let leave all players, not just big companies. Well, I believe we have to talk about, we have to talk about the Minister of Economy in Zelenadolsk and in Chamber of Commerce. Now, uh, we have limited time, let me give floor to uh, Vladimir Zyvetkov. Uh, we, we, we see that uh, we have to be very, 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 very careful, and uh, you cannot do it just empirically. And uh, we have now informatization. We move on to infor using informational systems. We have to uh, take a global look at this whole system. We have to start modeling 
uh, in transportation and logistics. So the floor is given to the uh, Professor Dyatkov to sum up what we're talking about and provide his opinion what we're going to do uh, from the viewpoint of switching to information technologies in this area yeah, to create a digital double. Well, uh, it's the uh, end of discussion and we don't have a lot of time. That's important, really important. The role of uh, predictive modeling is very important and we talk about projects, we use the word system. Some people talk about roads, some say about logistical centers, some talk about traffic, cargo traffic, but but we have to look at this as a, a integrated system, a built up model to prognose its behavior, especially when we uh, see new strategic plans like this big new road. We thought that it would go through Kazan, but it turns out that it will uh, go in different direction. And uh, to, to consider the balance of transportation and traffic to look at the Republic in general and to build it in into the uh, aims which we have in for Russia and for Eurasia Union. We cannot talk only about our Republic. If we predict, if we forecast further development, we have to look at the bigger picture, namely look at the economy of the country. Transportation logistics system is interesting for the predictive modeling. Uh, it is quite complicated and empirically you cannot uh, uh, do a lot. Yeah, you can do empirically when you uh, something when you uh, single out one company, but to foresee the future of the whole system, no, That's hardly possible. And for many years we have been uh, doing this uh, predictive modeling, not just transportation logistics. So far as we're talking about transportation logistics, we say that uh, we're ready, we can do it. And when I say we, in the Academy of Science, Republic of Tatarstan, and we, we can uh, take care of the general management of this process, an overview, and uh, what Oksana uh, uh, represents, it's CAI and uh, and other universities they have their ideas and uh, we have uh, companies with practical tools for modeling and uh, we have a system which uh, allows to build quite complicated computer models and we have only two players on the market one company is in St. Petersburg and one company is in Kazan we've done uh, quite a lot uh, in implementation of our method in Russia and in Tatarstan. Unfortunately, uh, we managed to do more in Russia versus Tatarstan. Uh, we uh, wrote a program for logistics centers. Uh, Naksana talked about it and we uh, contributed our ideas into this sub-program, which is part of the uh, a government program, state program, and we also worked uh, uh, in the development of Inacom partnership. We uh, modeled this uh, project and uh, got results, and it's obvious there are a lot of uh, weak spots, uh, like, for example, why bridges built this or that place. It's uh, not 100% successful uh, decisions. They have a very bad uh, a railroad uh, network. This dam across uh, next to Navajo There are a lot of issues and a lot of questions which we, we cannot answer. And the answer can be given only by or through predictive modeling. So what you're going to do, we have to consider a transport logistics system as a unique organism as a, a unified system, integrated system, uh, and take care, uh, consider a separate logistical center in Republic, in Russia, and in Euro European and Asia Union. Uh, we have to build small models and bigger models as well. Um, and using this opportunity, 
uh, let me say that uh, we must pay you must pay attention to our possibilities what we can offer you know, we can offer ideas we can give you models we can uh, con uh, conduct and do certain groups and we can become a test ground uh, for for any kind of uh, uh, projects like that you have just said about analytical center that uh, the predictive modeling can be a foundation for uh, type of work which my colleague has told about, Oksana. And uh, we can be the, the founders of the analytical center. Let's, let's do it together. So, so I was talking about this uh, global and uh, the biggest scale calculations. And Tatarstan just cannot do it on his own. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, we, we have to work together with the, uh, with the bigger transportation economic balance. We have to understand that we need bigger model. So, yes, these are questions which must be addressed to Minister of Economics, Minister of Transportation. And uh, um, we, we just have to move on. And Tatarstan uh, might be or can be a pioneer in this area. Uh, uh, we have enough competences to do that. We have experience uh, like that, and we can announce ourselves as a region which can uh, work on the um, uh, forecasting model and pro further prognosis. Thank you very much. We have run out of time. And, uh, well, everybody was involved. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot to all of you. Yes, we are finishing.